Education regular meeting to order. Can I get a roll call vote, please? John Chart here. Here. Rebecca Haynes here. Lisa Cataluna here. Kim Smith Kalaga here. Hilary Stakowski. Except with notice. Uh, Jeff Silky here. Dan Salter here. Dan Gilbertson. Dan Gilbertson here. There you are. Uh, Jan Zizel. Yeah. Here. Did I say that right? Oh, Zizel. Zizel. Okay. Yeah. Zizel. And Carly Stone. Thank you. Okay, we'll stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, next on our agenda, we actually have Brian the student report. You're after this. <laughs> <laughs> but we should have Olivia Hansen and Kelly from step on up class of 23 and 24 come on up this is the first one this year for us welcome Hi. Okay. Well, I'm Kelly Crone and I'm a senior as you just said and I'm also the president of city council okay I'm Oops. Olivia I'm a junior and I'm vice president of student council yes. So girls, you have the quick no. here. Oh, oh, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> Where are we? Oh, so we have new Okay. 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 So basically, we're just going to talk about what's new in Vernon High School and Vernon Student Council. So for activities in Brandon High School recently, we have sports. Recently, there's been like football games, which right now we're three and one current. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we have boys tennis, boys soccer, cheerleaders, girls golf, and cross country. And then other events, we've had our senior sunrise, which is the picture on the bottom, where a bunch of seniors got together and came on like a Sunday morning. Yeah. Sunday morning to watch the sunrise, but it just wasn't the sunrise. <laughs> 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 The powder puff game is like an event that the girls like play flag football for homecoming and it's on the Tuesday, the 27th. And then the juniors have the NMSQT test coming up. And it's basically like a practice SAT test coming in October. And then some recent activities in student council. We just got our class shirts in, which is what Olivia and I are wearing right now. <laughs> And we also just sashed our court winners, which there's two of them right there. Those are our sophomore candidates. And we also got our Stuco shirts in, which is just like our Stuco merchandise that we get every year. And our emperor and empress were Mr. Nick Martin and Ms. Rodriguez. We also just had two new foreign exchange students get added into our class. So we're very excited about that. And we are also working on our homecoming spirit week, and we just decided all of the spirit days. Um, upcoming student council events are this, for homecoming. We have a parade coming up, which we'll do Friday before the football game with like just a bunch of people in town. And then our dance, which will be on October 1st, the Saturday after the parade. And then Camp Copenhagen is like a camp that we'll go to just our student council class for one night. We're doing it on October 10th through 11th. And so just our student council will go and it's just like a fun like, bonding activity for like us to grow as a council and come up with new ideas. And it's like right after homecoming. So it's like time to like relax and everything. Um, so yeah, and we'll have a campfire there, two chaperones and like we'll work on communication skills and stuff. And I think that's it. I do have a question. Yes. The parade for a week from tomorrow, or another week from this Friday, right? What's the route? 
Is it out on M15 like they used to? Do you know yet what the parade um, route will be? No, I think it's just going to be through town. Just in the village there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Maybe end up at Harvey. Harvey. Okay, yeah. Harvey. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't even get on to M15. Oh, not anymore. Okay. That right. one year I saw them because I remember it was at McPhee. The trip will be getting them from M from Harvey too. Yeah. yeah. Okay. We start on Ball Street by like this baseball yep. Yep. fields mm -hmm. for the, the parks and rec, and then we end up. Come down like south. Yeah. HSC. It is shoot off. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go cool off. Sounds yeah. good. Any questions for high school student council? Thank you very much. We'll see you next month. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next, Brian, you're up. Come on. Okay, I'm not going to stand up. <laughs> <laughs> we'll even give you the clicker back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, quick update, uh, bond update for September. Uh, so again, we're working still on the Harvey Swanson renovations. This is for summer 2023 construction. Uh, still working on the Harvey Swanson renovations. Been meeting with Jessica several times, refining the designs, going through uh, all the information. Again, that'll include classroom flooring, doors, new cabinetry, lockers, furniture, some media center upgrades, uh, exterior entrance upgrades, and then some roofing and HVAC. Uh, upgrades replacing I think the units by the kitchen and the band room. Uh, again, we've met with Jessica. We're meeting regularly now, and then we're going to have committee meetings with the furniture committee and the uh, cabinet, uh, the interior uh, committee that did the casework and the cabinets. Just had one more meeting with them to finalize that, make sure that they have seen everything and didn't have a change of heart over the summer. Uh, media center upgrades. Again, we've got a, a nice concept for that. We'll be meeting with the media center specialists from both Oakwood and Swanson uh, very soon to go over that idea. And then the entrance upgrade, we've got a design approved. So <clears throat> I'll be presenting that in September. Um, this is September. Yeah. I'll, be, I'll be presenting that in October at the next meeting. For that. High school, again, for summer 23, there's some classroom uh, unit ventilators. We're finishing up the classroom unit vents that we didn't do at the last go around. Uh, creating a new restroom in the back corridor behind the Performing Arts Center for the students to use. And then there's a couple of flat roof areas that we'll be replacing as well. Uh, the pool roof, we're gonna push to 24 because the uh, HVAC unit for the pool uh, probably won't be here in time for summer. Of 24, so we don't want to do that rough until that new unit is in place and set. Uh, so the summer of 23, probably maybe even into the fall, we really won't know until we get the bids in on that roof unit or on the uh, on the dehumidification unit to see exactly how long it's going to take to get that guy here. Uh, but that's under the pool renovations. There's a new scoreboard timing system. I'll be meeting with Jesse to finalize those uh, specifications. The canopy room piping, and then the last item there is the, the pool ventilation unit that I just mentioned there. So uh, that'll all be happening and going out for bids this fall. Uh, parking lot work, the high school uh, is selected. Uh, we've identified the worst areas of the high school parking areas and driveways. Uh, and then uh, Harvey Swanson is the other item that we'll be doing in 23. We've kind of expanded that scope a little bit now. We're looking at reconfiguring drop-off lanes uh, and also expanding the parking areas. So it went from just a one-for-one -one replacement to more of a redesign of that parking lot. So uh, Jessica and I met with the civil engineer this afternoon, got some ideas. Uh, he's gonna do some concepts and work up some, um, some designs for us to look at, but um, uh, we're going to be redoing that to create, uh, to correct the whole issue there. Jessica's doing a great job managing it right now, but we feel architecturally we can redesign the entrance ways to uh, really help yeah. that out. So there's no crossover of traffic. Right now, the biggest problem is the crossover of bus and car traffic. So we're going to get some concepts uh, in front of her to look at so we can fix that whole issue there. Athletic fields, uh, what'll be going out this fall for bid is the high school football field turf replacement the track surface replacement, and then the middle school baseball field, converting that into the varsity ball field with fencing and uh, infield work. And that'll also include the uh, toilet work at the back of iTech Center so we can access those toilets for after hours. And uh, also a hard surface path from the parking lot all the way to the field for ADA 
compliance and anybody who has a disability so they don't have to walk across the grass. They'll also be going out. Uh, soccer field update, we had a great meeting this past week. A lot of information was shared. Uh, we did get our results from Oakland County and the Eagle folks that uh, as long as we uh, discharge uh, the same way that the water is going into the creek now, we don't have to get an Eagle <clears throat> permit, which is very good to hear. So um, we're, we're taking a pause on that because there's more information that we're going to be presenting uh, to the board and the committees, some other ideas that came up at the last meeting. So I'll call it a work in progress now. The discussion from, from last week is still going to continue. I don't think we're at a situation yet where we're ready to make any decisions. So we're going to just take our time with that and not rush through. So I've got more information I'll be presenting or be uh, I'll try to set up a meeting coming up very soon with, with everybody involved. And then we'll, we'll uh, continue to work on that and see what the best solution is for everybody. Uh, again, summer 23 construction, the items we talked about will be going out for bid in October, November. Uh, we're continuing with our meetings and designs. I do have the construction manager involved now. So he's looking at the projects and scheduling his bid packages and how he wants to put those out for bid, bring the bids in, how he wants to package them up for contractors so it makes sense and we get high efficiency <coughs> when we go out for bidding. Uh, and then I'll be presenting some of the final designs at the October meeting for you to just give you a, a better idea of uh, some of the design items that we've been working on. I think, okay, construction. Oh yeah, okay, so we finished the playground at Harvey Swanson, just got in at the nick of time there before the start of school. And I think it's been so far very, yeah, very, very well received, so very happy with that. Um, parking lot at Oakwood, we still have to do the, uh, there's a drain uh, behind the chiller unit, so we remove the water that drains off the chiller. I think that still has to be done this week, uh, but all the other work I think is completed. Working okay? Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. We have to wait for the rainstorm to really check out the total action. Though. We still have to wait. <laughs> we, need, we need a couple good rains so we can see if there's any bird baths uh, of water so we can bring the contractor back out and correct that. So, so keep your eye on <laughs> Um, okay, that, that's it. <clears throat> any questions from anybody? I don't. Any questions? Thanks, Brian. Appreciate it. Thank all you. The time. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay, next on our agenda, we have the superintendent report. Thank you, President Salter. Um, first, I'd like to begin with acknowledging our human resources department. They have been working tirelessly, um, say throughout the summer. That's pretty safe to say. Uh, working hard to ensure we have highly qualified individuals in these open positions we have, um, we used to have open. I think we're fully staffed with our professional positions filled, except for two social worker positions, I believe. We still have two openings there, but other than that, I think everybody is filled uh, with highly qualified individuals, caring professionals. I know we have some principals here that have some of those um, professional outstanding staff members here present that maybe we could introduce. So if you're I'm able to do an yeah. intro for us, that'd be great, Ms. Hevel. I had Carrie Ann Okins here tonight. Carrie Ann is, um, this is her 11th year teaching, but first year in Brandon. So she taught in the Kersley School District for 10 years, teaching both kindergarten and first grade. She is a Goodrich grad. Um, an Orton Mill resident. Her husband is a Brandon grad. Yay. So we're super excited to have right. Carrie Ann nice. at HSE to join our first grade team. Awesome. Great. Welcome. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> we're, we're very happy we stole you from Kersley. <laughs> <laughs> <Very happy. laughs> well, congratulations. Welcome Thank to you. Brandon. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Um, Mr. Stevens. All right, um, we're very excited. Uh, and thank you again for adding that third council last year to us. Um, we're very excited that her first day was actually today. Um, this is Trisha Nelson and Trisha is taking over that third counseling position. Very excited to have her. She comes from um, Mock Community College. So she brings that, that real life college um, knowledge to us as we help our kids maneuver through um, that whole process. Um, so she's been at Mount Community College, and could you talk a little bit more about your, just real quickly, more, more information about you? It's her first day, so I haven't got to know her yeah. a whole lot myself. That's great. Good news, I'll be back tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Um, yeah, I worked at Mac Community College for 12 years, um, just really enjoying making a difference in students' lives. And I thought, man, how great would it be if I could do that at, uh, you know, just before students head off to college. Um, and I actually initially went to school to work in either middle school or high school as a counselor. So um, yeah, I'm very excited. I have a husband and two kids. They're in the Good Dirt School District. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm very, very excited to be here. Um, amazing team of individuals high school and I'm excited. Thank you. So thank you. Thank well, you. great. Welcome. Thank We're you. so yeah. glad you're here. You. Welcome to Brandon. Thanks. So thank you. We also do have a math teacher who was unable to make it with us tonight, but her name is Bethany Taylor. Bethany was a long-term building sub for us um, last year. We're excited to have her back. She's very talented and uh, do a great job for us as well. Okay. Great. Thank you, Dan. Yeah. Big Koi, you're next. I don't have anybody here. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I can tell you, <laughs> yeah. we um, just hired and has just started off with a new fourth grade teacher, Heather Williams, and she came to us from, which one is it? Center, Center line. line, way, way far away. I don't even know where that is, but she's joined our team. <laughs> And she said it's probably the best decision she's ever made. She's finding awesome. oh, it a really nice, comfortable home to be, and she's just thrilled. So we're happy to have her on board. Oh, good. Thank you. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Part of a great team. Yep. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, yes, I'd like to also add that um, obviously we're like the students reported. We're in full swing. School is uh, picking up momentum. Uh, students are getting engaged, active, and all different kinds of activities. So very positive um, start to the school year. Um, also the Oregonville Lions Club, as I'm told, September Fest, yeah. I believe is uh, this coming Thursday through Sunday. So that's um, a pretty exciting event for this town. Um, so hoping to volunteer some time there later this week. Of course, next week is homecoming. Uh, that's a pretty, uh, very significant um, yeah. calendar dates coming up in advance here. And then of course, we made an announcement last Friday that the district has announced that Ed and Diane Donaldson, distinguished alumni, uh, to be honored. And those individuals are Lieutenant Greg Glover, the class of 1985, and uh, Mr. Michael, actually Dr. Michael Manor II, a graduate of the class of 1998. So very excited about um, participating in that special distinguished opportunity, opportunity to honor these two um, Outstanding individuals. Um, that's a week from Thursday. So Great. That. Thank you. Um, so, other than that, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, next, we have public comments and questions on agenda business. Maria's going to go check. One here. The first two names for their students. That's the. Yeah, and it sounds like. Oh, oh, I see. Those are students. Yep, yep. Student council. Jen. Where is, is Jen? Said, oh, there you are. Sorry. If this would come at. I don't know if it's really agenda item, but we would have you if you hang through the meeting. We, before we go after our action items, we have uh, another place for citizens input that's general and doesn't matter what it's about. Okay. 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 Thanks, Jen. Okay. Next, we have. Uh, can I get an approval for the consent oh, agenda? Do, do oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. sorry. About that. Okay. We do not have any. Okay, thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Okay, next, uh, could I get a motion for the approval of the consent agenda? Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve the consent agenda as presented. Support. <clears throat> okay, any discussion? Having none, could I get a roll call vote, please? John Sharp, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Um, Rebecca Hank, yes. Lisa Cavaluna, yes. Kim Smith Salada, yes. Hillary's, uh, Hillary's not here. Jeff, yes. Diane Salter, yes. 
Okay, next we have our information and discussion items board report. I do have some uh, something that I just sort of put together. It was basically, first I wanna say that you know, all our school buildings also are open with our students and staff filling the, all the buildings up and that's so good to hear and see. Uh, the school board is very thankful to our staff for getting our kids to school plus making the process safe and efficient as possible. I know there may be a couple of kinks that they're still being worked on, but we're very proud of how resilient our staff is to navigate through things while tweaking processes to, excuse me, to make things better. Uh, but I just wanted to thank all our staff wherever they are. Thank you for this whole week and moving forward. Next, welcome John Chartier to the board in his first regular meeting. And, and I will say yes, we do do roll call votes for all the votes now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other thing was just sort of the money, bond money, uh, general update that we had on the workshop. Uh, basically, uh, that we met with the board, district administrators, and Brian Smilnack again for the workshop and talking about the cost of projects and that uh, we did not really, we didn't make any decisions, but we are still doing the research. Um, we asked our architects and construction consultants to put together a package with specific athletic improvements that aligned with our bond promises that we made. And again, in, in particular, we were asked them to, we're talking about replacing the track at Harvey Swanson Complex, and we have to decide what's the best financial uh, decision to make on that. So there were two, air, two thought processes at this point. One is to what would be the cost of having a community walking running track that would allow our kids and community to use it for exercising, or do we cost to replace the full track into an official track as to whether we would be doing that instead. You know, but yes, there's that track. We promise to replace it. It will get replaced. We just still, like I said, still getting information on that. Uh, then any other improvements that we may be able to do at the Harvey Swanson complex that would make it ADA accessible, improve the field service for hosting more than one support on a grass field out there. Uh, any other possible upgrades that we can do at the varsity baseball field that had already not been discussed or looked at because we may get some new ideas coming out of Brian. A uh, list of improvements for our varsity soccer field. And at this point, the thought was if we were to keep the grass field, what other upgrades for that arena that could make it better in year round playing options uh, for out there? And if there were any recommend recommended upgrades to all of our fields or stadium entrances or locations that would better identify them for people attending those games or events. And I don't know if Brian said it, but we've been pretty much told as the board, uh, administration says we have to have. 85% of our series one project done. And if I understand it paid for by March of 2025. So things are gonna ramp up here a little bit. And as Brian said, I, I'm just, my mind went to the list of action items we're gonna be probably coming to us in, in the October meeting. Uh, tonight, we do have an action item to approve new band instruments. And that was one of our promises for the bond, for the bond when we asked uh, for the community to support it. Uh, Wednesday, Rebecca, uh, Dan, Super, Superintendent Dan and I are attending the Open Schools dinner meeting. The keynote speaker is Jason Russell, who is our security consultant. And the school, Oakland Schools Board of Education has about five of these meetings, and I call them dinners, a year, and each one has an important topic that they showcase. So, this is exciting because it'll be Dan's first with us. In fact, Dan's first probably in a long time. So, and I always enjoy it. You, you get a good dinner out of it. So, um, and then uh, last, uh, we're very excited to see that whole Harvey Swanson and Oakland are bringing back their back on the island overnight trips. That's so very, and the National Honor Society, I think we're not on the, the Student Council, Student Council yeah. uh, their trip over to the camp oh, there. So that's my report. Does anybody from the board have anything they want to say, add, change? Okay, having none. Education report. Carly, you got the floor. Thank you. <laughs> Brian. Brian <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, John, nice to see you again. Welcome back. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm very fortunate to be joined this evening by some pretty remarkable ladies. Um, if they could please just introduce themselves to the board before we go ahead and get going. Hi, Justin Cohen, Special Ed Director. Okay. I'm Hagerman, Social Worker at the High School. Janine Martha, I'm Counselor at the Middle School. All right, now charge this evening is to share with you our social emotional learning plan for the 2022-2023 school year. We're going to share it in three phases, what we've accomplished, what we're working on, and what we're looking forward to. One of the things we're most excited to share is what we've accomplished so far, and there's been a lot of intentional work that's happened over the past few years um, in exercising the grant funds that have been available to us in a variety of ways. Um, in terms of increasing our mental health staffing across the school district. Um, we wanted to do a comparison for you so that you had a sense of how much things have changed um, since the pandemic began. So prior to the pandemic at the high school, we had two counselors and one social worker. Um, this year, we have the resources available to staff three counselors, and Patricia, and two social workers. Um, at the middle school, prior to the pandemic, we were one counselor and half of a social worker, point five. Now you can see uh, we are staffed with two counselors and a full-time social worker, Janine. Um, she joined us last year. So wonderful, wonderful to have her. Uh, Harvey Swanson nor Oakwood had counselors at the building prior to the pandemic. Each of them now do full-time. Um, and then there was a, a 0.5 social worker assigned to each building. And each building has, um, have, the resources are assigned for social workers at each building. So pretty excited about that. Just to let you know, we have a couple of seats we yet to, have yet to fill. Um, one of which is um, in the hopper, I believe. And then we have um, another one that is still open um, at the elementary, but we're looking through that this time. But please know that all the resources are available to support the buildings in this way with staffing for the coming school year, or for this school year, yes. Um, and then the, the district psychologist, prior to the pandemic, we had one, and we now have two. And so in terms of looking at priorities and being thoughtful with resources, um, I think this is a great piece of evidence to support the fact that the Brandon School District has taken social emotional health of our students very seriously over the course of the pandemic. So um, we are here tonight to talk about a social emotional plan for this year and beyond. And the intent of the plan is to build an aligned system that intentionally monitors and supports the mental health of all of our students here in the district. The mental health team, which is comprised of district psychologists, you get to see all the physicians, counselors, social workers, is an integral part of this plan, its design, its implementation and review. The following strategies and activities will be implemented as a result of this plan this school year. The first of which is a mental health screener which we will use to gather for all students at multiple points in the school year. If you recall, when we came back in person, right after, right after the COVID hit, we did a mental health screener for our students in the fall. We look forward to doing that three times throughout the school year. It's kind of like the NWEA of mental health. Um, so we can get a fall sense of where our students are. We can take a dip in January to see how are we progressing. And then um, again in the spring, um, hopefully we see um, a lot of improvement in our results as a uh, Due to the implementation of the plan. Secondly, we will be implementing an SEL curriculum um, that provided, has resources provided um, that are specific to grade levels and needs of our students. And um, our teams will be talking about that here in just a moment with all of you. And then lastly, uh, we do have professional learning to support our Brandon School District instruction of staff to ensure that we're meeting the needs of our students. So with that said, we're going to dig into those three things a little bit for you, and then we'll wrap it up. Okay, so we will be adopting again, I believe this was used pre um, pandemic or right after the student risk screening scale, SRSS. So this measures um, a number of internalizing and externalizing factors for students. So teachers will rate every student in the district, um, K-12, which will give us a nice global look at our system, looking at strengths and areas to grow. Um, and it really allows educators to assess how well our systems are working and what gaps we may have. So from these, from these data sets, we'll be able to then group students. Maybe these students are you know, um, deficient in these areas. So then we will design lessons around those areas to help fill those gaps for students. So it's a specific way to monitor students, but also it helps inform our instruction. So we're doing something with that data and then monitoring again to check on ourselves. So we should see ideally an improvement in our SRSS data throughout the year. 
Okay, then we're going to move on to Navigate 360, which is a online um, platform that's used for all of our students, but it's a K-12 and it is evidence-based. Um, as you can see, we're also getting it free, which is one of the added bonuses, right, for everybody in the, in the state of Michigan. Um, it also will talk about the fit all the castle competencies for SEL learning throughout the district and for the state. Um, it provides the online format can be used for students, for staff, and for parents. So there's a parent component where they also could follow along. The best part of this program I find is it has over 200 different levels that we can use. So if we have something that we want to discuss with our students, it can do from bullying to empathy to kindness, all sorts of things we could talk about. And we could do the same one district wide. And then it grows each year. So what they're doing in kindergarten, they can repeat again in first and second grade and all the way through, but it grows as they move on. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to talk about professional. <laughs> <laughs> so aside from Alice training, the, um, we, we thought another huge point and feedback from the staff was about trauma-informed practices. We do have a um, partner with Julie McDaniel at Oakland Schools who's provided the training. Janine has been to a few, I've been to a few, offered to come to the school, present for half our day PD. And it's not, when we hear trauma-informed, sometimes we think, oh, we're gonna be providing therapy in the classroom. So it's not what trauma-informed is. Trauma-informed is how to recognize the signs of trauma, get a, get a look at it from like a classroom perspective as well, the clinical and some in the moment things we can do to address or adjust our style of teaching to recognize for if and when students are experiencing trauma. Oh, the scheduled date is November 8th. So happy <laughs> happy. And then a refresh in January with the Navigation 360 included on the same date. And then another recap on March 24th. Thank you. And what we're looking forward to is our timeline here. So we're communicating our plan to you today. We've met with um, administrators, the mental health team as well to talk about our implementation plan. We will be implementing the SRSS um, in October. We'll be launching the Navigate 360 with the parents um, in late, mid late October. Um, so parents will get a chance to really preview a lot of these modules and it is geared towards parents. So if a parent is feeling, gosh, you know, my student is reporting this at school, it kind of allows them um, a lot of resources that are parent friendly. So you don't have to have a master's degree in social work to um, implement and understand it. So it's really, we had a nice demo to look at everything. It's, um, it's really user friendly. Um, and then our tier two groups uh, supports will be implemented beginning in October. So although the SRSS will be um, given in October, we already have like, you know, pretty much an idea of maybe who needs support in the school. So we don't have to wait until then to implement. So groups are already starting. Implement, yes. you know, everyone is already working, but this will allow us to align our data points to see, okay, this makes sense. The students showing up here and here. So we're going to plan our groups around that. Um, in November, as mentioned, we'll be doing the, um, SEL and trauma-informed practices training. January will be another SRSS facilitation and analysis. Teacher training again. So Dr. Um, Julie McDaniel from Open Schools will be working on the neuroscience of trauma-informed pieces with us in November, the social science pieces in January, and really focusing on the implementation throughout, but really bringing that home in our last training with her um, in March. Um, and then in February, we'll be ready to launch Navigate 360 with our students. So that will be a really exciting time, I think, especially as we look to, again, capture SRS data in the spring to see this is the target intervention and then what are our results. Um, and I'm excited to look at to our special ed data to see is that going to bring down our referral rates? Do we have less students needing social emotional supports at the school level? Um, that's it. Yeah. And they will do another facilitation of SRSS and more data analysis. And then those will help drive our groups to start right away in September of next year. One of the features that was very attractive to us about the Navigate 360 platform, that they have a design scope and sequence, as was mentioned by Janine. It also gives us the ability to customize it. So let's say we notice a trend in our data, we can maybe prioritize the scope and sequence um, to fulfill the needs of what we're noticing a big trend across the district, or maybe in a particular building, or even in a particular grade. 
Um, so we're pretty excited about what does that look like when you hear about the SEL curriculum. Um, they are online modules. They vary from 17 minutes to 21 minutes long. At the secondary level, that's a very independent activity. At the elementary level, it's a very um, act, uh, collaborative yeah, activity yeah, very uh, very with active. the teacher yep. as well, particularly with our youngest uh, students, K2. Um, but everything is, but I mean, things like mindfulness, you know, lots of different, um, we have everything available if you'd like to review that um, with us. But we have all the scope and sequences for all of the grade levels. So we're excited to have our mental health team really guide this work. They're going to use that data to, to help us with what are we teaching all students, but then are we ensuring we're supporting the right groups of students? Do we have the right students in those groups, etc.? So lastly, um, as we continue to look forward, we will be monitoring everything and, and this implementation, is it going how we intended? Um, are there things we need to slow down upon? Are there things that we can speed up? Um, we'll be incorporating um, the data to look at intervention development. Maybe we notice a group of students there that needs some specific type of intervention that we currently don't have or don't support. It's going to be a very fluid and responsive process on behalf of the school district, very data driven. And most importantly, we'll be gathering feedback. As I mentioned before, a very um, important stakeholder has been our mental health team in this process. It's been a very collaborative, um, very collaborative process with the team. But we'll also be asking for feedback from our staff, um, our students, and we're really excited about uh, the parent component for families. Even if they're looking for a resource on how to work on how do I manage social media in my house with my team, um, there is something there for parents to go to and access at their leisure. Um, for those modules. So you can look forward to those launching at parent-teacher conference time um, in October. We feel that's a nice connection um, and we're pretty excited about that. And then last but not least, not least I couldn't help myself, um, but these are our Blackhawks coming into school this year and the little one on the right, um, all again, like right, we're in pre-K and it's just the cutest picture oh, ever. But um, <laughs> these are some of our Blackhawks here. Some of them are getting ready to leave us. Those uh, the siblings there in the middle of their senior year, um, but we've got some that are just getting started and everywhere in between. So oh, man. what questions do you have for us? Any questions, board? Someone covers. I have one question, like surprise, surprisingly. For middle school and high school, I know at middle school, my recollection is they had a home classroom. Who evaluates or assesses them as they're going to classes, to class, to different classrooms? Is it more than one teacher, or do you assign a student to a teacher or so, teacher to a student? Um, well, I can talk about the middle school. We've talked about having, or for the SRSS, we are actually going to have their um, teacher do it in seminar. So then we will have consistent data throughout the year. We did discuss having different teachers do it, but I think the consistency will be important at the middle school. And you can talk to the high school. Remember. Yeah, at the high school, we had tried seminar in the past. We don't have it anymore. We were going to get to the team leadership and kind of discuss what would work best for the teachers because we want to respect their time and teaching in certain academic areas and other classes as well. So we want to bring that to the leadership teams to get feedback to what might be most appropriate. Okay. Thank you. I'm all set. Thank you very much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. That's about to start. Good job. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Okay. Next, we have our finance report, Jan. I just have nothing on the chart. Oh, I have some action items. Okay. Oh my gosh. You're invited to all our meetings now. Okay, next we're going to go to our action items. First, uh, we have to fill the position of vice president here on the board. And I would like to take nominations for any board member uh, that would like to uh, be, go to the board as VP, move to a different position. Is there any? I'm going to nominate Kim. <laughs> okay. And is there a second? Second. Okay. Thank Kim. You. Thank Thank you. Okay. You. Is there anybody? Thank is you. there any other nominations? Okay. Having none, could I get a motion then to elect Kim Smith Kalaga to VP? Move to elect, elect Kim Smith Kalaga as vice president for the remainder of the 2022 calendar year, September 15th through December 31st, 2022. Second. Okay, can I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Hain? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kim smith -Colada? Yes, thank you. Um, Jeff Silkey? Yes. Dan Sullivan? <laughs> yes. 
and now we technically have an open position. Now it's secretary, and I know it's not here, but if I we should fill the the position of secretary, and I didn't know if anybody from the board would be interested to do that, and could we get a nomination for that? I would like to nominate Rebecca Haynes. Okay, do I have a second? Second. Okay, uh, got a second for Rebecca for secretary. Is there any other nominations or anybody else interested in secretary? Okay, having none, could I get a motion please to elect a, uh, Rebecca as secretary? Move to elect Rebecca Haynes as secretary for the remainder of the 22, 2022 calendar year, September 15th through December 31st, 2022. We can support. Support. Okay, could I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavalluno? Yes. Kim Smith Balaga? Yes. Jeff Silke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. So, of course, now this opens up treasurer. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like they're all walking in different. I didn't know if we have a nomination that I would like to allow who we want to elect to be treasurer. I'm looking forward to replace Rebecca. Do we have a nomination? Hillary. I'm going to elect Hillary. You're going to elect her. You're nominating. Nominate. 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 I'm just, well, she's not here, so we're just going to elect her. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I have a nomination for Hillary. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, second. Uh, any other interested board members to be treasurer? And I, Hillary said if this were to happen, she would accept it. <laughs> I think she's going to have to, but could I get a roll call vote? <laughs> or can I get a motion that says Hillary for treasurer? Move to elect Hillary Stokowski as the vice, as the treasurer for the remainder of the 2022 calendar year, September 15th through December 31st, 2022. Support. Okay. Can I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kim Smith Collada, yes. Jeff Silke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Okay, next on our agenda, the last position that we need to fill is uh, board representative to the Oakland County Intermediate School District. Could I get a nominee or a suggestion of who would like to be our Oakland Schools rep? I'd, I'd like to nominate Jeff Silke. <laughs> okay. Is there a second for Jeff Silke? Second. <laughs> Second? Okay. Okay. Is there any other nominations? Okay. Having none, can I get a roll call vote? John Chartier. Yes. You have to do a motion. Oh, motion. Oh, can I get a motion? I'm sorry. Can yeah. I get a motion? We need to Jeff. Sorry. Yep. <laughs> I, I suspect the only um, one no. Move the Brandon Board of Education appoint Jeff Zilke as its representative to the Oakland County Intermediate School District. Support. Okay. Can I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier. Yes. Rebecca Haynes. Yes. Lisa Cavaluna. Yes. Kim Smith Galaga. Yes. Jeff Silke. Yes. <laughs> Diane Salter. Yes. Thank you, Jeff, for Look stepping up. Okay. Next on our agenda is approval of the human resource report. Can I get a motion, please? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the human resource report as presented. Support. Okay. If we met the crew and uh, any discussion. Just so excited. Yep. Having none, roll call vote, please. John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kim Smith Kalaga? Yes. <laughs> Jeff Zilke? Yes. Dan Salter? Yes. Next, a motion to approve the Oakwood Elementary overnight trip to Mackinac Island. The next one's Swanson. Move and Brandon Board of Education approve the. Oakwood Elementary fifth grade students overnight trip to Mackinac Island, May 24th through the 25th, 2023, as presented. Support. Okay. okay. Any discussion? Having none, can I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kim Smith Collada? Yes. Uh, Jeff Silkey? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Next is approval for the Harvey Swanson overnight trip to Mackinac Island. Can I get a motion, please? Move the Brandon Board of Education approve the Harvey Swanson Elementary fifth grade students overnight trip to Mackinac Island, May 24th through the 25th, 2023, as presented. Support. Support. Okay. Could I get a roll call vote, please? 
Judge Hartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavaluda? Yes. Kim Smith Colaga? Yes. Uh, Jeff Zilke? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Next, could I get a motion for the Brandon High School Student Council overnight trip to Camp Copaneca? Copaneca. 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 Yes. <laughs> oh, God, that's one. Okay. Whoever can say that word better read it. <laughs> the Brandon Board of Education approved the BHS Student Council overnight trip to Camp Coke Mechanic October 10th through the 11th, 2022, as presented. Board. Okay, can I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kim Smith Kaladi? Yes. Jeff Silke? Yes. Dan Salter? Yes. Next, can I get a motion to approve the purchase of band instruments? Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve the purchase of band instruments not to exceed 50000 <clears throat> Funding source 2021 voted bond as presented. Supported. Okay, thank you and Jan. That's Jane, I, um the fifty thousand should be one fourteen oh seventy one, and that matches what was in the um huh? it, I'm sorry I didn't catch it earlier. Yeah, what it should the amount be? Originally it should be one hundred fourteen thousand seventy one. Yeah, we changed it from the initial. Oh, okay, one yeah. one four oh seven one, and oh, that will the original bond. Budget for band instruments is 162.5, so that gets us to the 162.5. So Russ is done purchasing after this. Let me just ask you this should it see not to exceed 115,000? Yes, not to exceed, yeah. Just, not just, to oh, just not round to it up to 115. Yeah. 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 Just a, no, he yeah. only has 114. Oh, 71. <laughs> yes. Or yeah. if you want to do that, can we get an amended motion on this? Sure. Move that the Brandon Board of Education approve the purchase of band instruments not to exceed 115,000. Uh, funding source 2021 voted bond as presented. Support. Okay, Dan, and this is again bond money and van now if they'll have their rent. He, yes, instruments. he spent all he's got his some um, allocation yeah. Oh, good for him. I'm glad he we come yeah. one thing yeah. done. So okay. any other discussion? Having none, could I have a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Mr. Cavaluna? Yes. Kim Smith Collada? Yes. Jeff Zilke? Yes. Dan Salter? Yes. Next, could I get in a motion for the resolution authorizing purchase of a weapons detection system? Move the Brandon Board of Education to adopt the resolution authorizing the purchase of weapons detection system as presented. Support. Okay, Jan, I think just basically it's, we're going to talk about that a little bit, but it's giving you approval of getting out for bids and, and then purchasing it. Yep, we have to go out for bid. It's over the um, state okay. mandated grid limit of 20000 So we're going to just, um, it's going to hit the stream, so to speak, for about a week. Okay. We plan to do a bid opening next Tuesday, so it'll be a quick turnaround. Okay, great. Thank you. And so just to clarify, it's to go for bid. And once you have a, a winning bid, if you will, that's selected, then you can go ahead and purchase without needing to yeah. receive so any yes. further authorization from us. So it's a go And the resolution okay. that we yeah. um, that was prepared gives um, yes the full thing from the RFP to the actual contract to everything. So it's not exceed seventy five thousand. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. 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 Yes. Any other questions? No. Having none, could I have a roll call vote, please? Did, did, we, did you have a question? Did we move? Did we motion? We did, did move. Oh, I moved. Okay. Yeah, there was, yeah, was so long ago. Sorry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavaluna? Yes. Kim Smith Collada? Yes. Jeff Silkey? Yes. Nan yes. Salter? Yes. I just said you had a great memory too. <laughs> <Earlier, this laughs> was a lie. Okay. Can I get a motion to approve the D. M. Burr contract addendum? We'll move the Brandon Board of Education approve the D. M. Contract addendum as presented. Support. Okay. And again, this is a dollar increase. The starting wage will go to fourteen dollars for custodians. This is um, just out of need. The market and we are not able to. Um, 
get a full um, staff all summer and just affecting the um, cleanliness of the buildings and just the monthly they're they're overworked. I mean our supervisors cleaning the high school, it's just they can't keep up with the with the staff they have. So fingers crossed that this will um help help Denver find some time to so for it. Okay, great for Okay, great. Thank you. Any other questions? Having none, could I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Cavalino? Yes. Tim Smith Clavin? Yes. Jeff Silkey? Yes. Diane Salter? Yes. Okay, next on our agenda, we got citizens input and uh, Jen Freeze, come, come on up. And do you want to talk about Harvey Swanson? Yeah, the dismissal procedures. I hate okay. to be a Debbie Downer, and, but no, that's okay. And you technically <laughs> have about three minutes. Okay. Thank and you. And I timed my uh oh, good. So. I'm prepared. Yes. <laughs> I'm the mother of two children that have never had a normal school year. For the last several years, our district cowardly followed ignorant mandates that have negatively impacted our children. It will most likely cause long-term mental health condition. More than three years later, and finally things have come to light. Masks don't actually prevent COVID. They were certainly not for everyone and that the isolation of a healthy child is pretty ridiculous. Well, I'm here to let you know that you're heading down another problematic path. Locking parents out of elementary schools is a, is a mistake, and there will be long-term negative impacts on the relationships between parents and teachers. If you think that enrollment is down now, hang on to your number two pencils. How can you teach your staff to, te to look at a parent in the eye of a five, six, or seven-year-old and tell them to stay in their car while they swoon away their crying child. This building houses our children all day long for several months out of the year, and yet we are expected to wait outside while you bring our sick child out to us. And we are handing off birthday cupcakes to a security guard. Why are we okay with this? Harvey Swanson sent out a survey for suggestions regarding the new drop-off dismissal procedure. And so I'm skipping the queue and notifying you, the board directly, that will eventually approve the final plan for this new parking lot. I would suggest having the engineer design an area where parents can safely walk their children to and from the building if they choose to. I would also suggest remembering who these children belong to. You claim to be concerned about safety, but I'm sure that none of you can name a single time where a parent injured a student or staff member on school property. Parents are not bringing guns into schools, and yet you are treating us like that. Parents should not feel like they are dropping their children off to a prison and children should not be made to think that their parents are not welcome into their school or that it is a problem if they need one more hug at the flagpole before the bell rings. You can call it a safety measure all that you want, and there were some problems, but address those issues. And please know that you are not fooling us, even if you have fooled yourself. You see, we remember that's what we called all of the precautions that came with COVID, safety. There is a difference though. This time, many of us are struggling day to day to continue to send our kids to your institution. However, I can guarantee you that we won't be here arguing about this issue in three years. If it continues on this path, we will pull our children out and educate them ourselves. See, I don't need a daycare, a mental health professional, or a parent for my child. I need an educator. MCL section 380.10 establishes the role of a parent as a partner in their child's education and ensures a positive educational setting. You'll find this in the Michigan Department of Education handbook. Maybe you need to revisit your own recommendations and, re and redetermine what that means. Thank you. Okay, next on our agenda, we have a closed session Here. for negotiation. Oh, sorry, I have. Have no hands raised here. Okay, thank you. Uh, next on our agenda, we have a uh, closed session. Can I get a motion to go in the closed session for the negotiation? Board of Education approved to convene a closed session at the request of the school district's administration to discuss strategy connected with the negotiation of a collective bargaining agreement. Second. Okay, could I get a roll call vote, please? John Chartier? Yes. Rebecca Haynes? Yes. Lisa Catalina? Yep. Kim Smith Kalaga? Yes. Jeff Silky? Yes. Van Salter? Yes. Okay, we'll take a three minute recess. Go ahead and move back here. So, okay, we're just coming out of closed session and seeing that we have no other business, meetings adjourned. Mm -hmm.